Matteo Conti, and this is an MC Peak Performance and Fitness video linked to our latest blog post, Plyometric Training. Now, as I spoke about in the blog post, Plyometric Training is an excellent tool to enhance power capabilities of your trainee, whether that's from youth level all the way up to adult level. The session I'm going to take you through is a beginner session which looks at in, um, increasing the number of contacts they make, strengthening up the calf area and also uh, improving technique so they're able to then go through and do more advanced exercises. So with this session you first you want to mark out about 10 meters to be able to do the initial portion of it and then it will be tighter area when you go on to the later exercises. So I'll take you through the first exercise. And the first exercise is all about being on the balls of your feet and getting used to making bouncy contacts. So all, you, all that you want to do with stiff legs. So as you can see, my leg remains stiff. That's what you want with plyometric exercises because it's going to be quick contacts. So it's always on the balls of your feet. So you want to make contact in this portion of the foot at all times. So throughout the whole session, try and emphasize to your athlete that from now, from the start, every single contact you make is on that part of the foot. So you don't want heel and you don't want toes. So I'll just show you that again. Again, so just nice and bouncy, nice and bouncy. After every contact, Try and pull your toes up towards your shins. Okay, you'll be doing that over a longer area, and that's already switching on your calves, and the athletes will be able to feel that, and they'll be able to get to use of that technique. So moving on to the next exercise, it's a bit more of sprint technique. So plyometric training doesn't have it does have an impact on your acceleration because again, it improves your power. So it's a good linking in the exercises with sprint tech and plyometric training. So again, you're going to be on the balls of your feet and all you're going to do is do a pilar march. So from there, again, you do it over that over 10 meters. And then on the way back, you can do it backwards to test the athlete on their coordination skills going backwards or you can get them to walk back. So again, Every time you make contact, it's balls of the feet. Every time you come up, you're going to want to pull your toes up towards your shin, but keep this angle nice and tight. So you're working on that sprint technique, but again, with a plyometric emphasis by getting on the balls of your feet. This can then be worked on with a single leg pilar march. Again, try and emphasize a nice strong body, tight arms, everything moving linearly along lines. Still, balls of your feet contact. Now with this sprint tech linking to plyometric exercise, you're gonna to want to build into double contacts. So the force of contact with the floor, you're gonna want that to increase. So now every time you're going through the movements, try and get them to power down into the floor each time. So every time they work their way up on the forward ways, it's getting stronger and stronger the contact. This is them building towards that double contact. So they're going to feel like they're nearly bouncing off the floor each time. So when they get to that level, then you can say double contact. don't want to skip, you want the movement to be forceful so then you bounce. Again, balls of your feet, strong contact, pull your toes up, tight angle, angle between here. I move on to more jump type practices which are plyometric in nature. So we're going to start off with the bunny hops. Now with the bunny hops, the emphasis is quick contacts. So like before, you want quick contacts, not about height, it's not really about distance, it's about getting, about getting quality quick contacts. You're going to try and do work over an area of doing four contacts. That could be nice or small of two meters. Then after that, just let them ease off and then walk back to the start again. So you want good quality, some stiff legs, working and working on the balls of our feet. 
as we have been, but also try and get them to relax from their upper body and use their arms as well to be able to build momentum in the jumps in order to maybe get a little bit more height and distance without jeopardizing the technique of the lower body, but also to help them feel less rigid. So here we go. So just four, and then they can just walk it off and walk back to the start. So with those four contacts, I'll do those again in a minute, you want nice and quick, each time, bang, pulling your toes up after contact and keeping your legs rigid. So then they'll come back to the start and they'll do it again. Walking off. So it's nice and quick, nice and forceful. Yep. Okay, now we're going to look at the next exercise, which is the pogos. So with pogos, it's more about emphasizing height on each jump. So you want vertical displacement of the center of mass each time. I don't, you don't want to see your athlete trying to jump forwards as well, because then you're going to lose that vertical height. There is going to be a level of going forwards because as you jump, you naturally do. But you want more vertical displacement each time. So again, same concept, balls of the feet contact. Try and maintain as rigid as possible with the lower body. There is going to be a slightly more give because with the pogos to get that extra height, you may spend slightly longer with contact with the floor. And again, try and use your arms to allow a less rigid body and more momentum in getting yourself higher. Okay. So there I was trying to generate as much height as possible on the jumps, but still trying to maintain the technique of pulling my toes off each time, balls of the feet contact, driving up with your arms, getting that nice high vertical displacement. So the last exercise on the session plan was bounds. Now bounds are more single leg, so you work from one leg to the other as you would with a running stride and each stride is elongated so you're reaching for the stride and bouncing onto the next one. I compare it to a Baywatch, Baywatch run down the beach. So if you watch now a quick demo and then I'll explain it in a bit more detail. So as before, it's always balls to the feet contact. Each stride, I'm trying to bounce to the next one. So it is longer than a normal running stride. It's their, that's why they're called bounds. And you try and make a quick contact to bounce to the next one, bounce to the next one, bounce to the next one. Try and maintain, as you would with a running action, opposite arm to opposite leg, to maintain that coordination and less rigid nature of the body whilst doing the exercise. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the pr first plyometric session that you would do with your athlete. Hopefully from that they've helped They've been able to build up a level of understanding of the, the needs and of the technique and in order to keep balls of the feet contact, rigid nature of the legs, building up that calf strength and building up the ability to move with these exercises. Hopefully this is the first stage and they can then build from that in advancing in the number of contacts they do for each session and also the, the advancedness of the exercises hopefully leading all the way to drop jumps in the future and yeah test out with your with your athletes and let me know how you go